the Chinese are quite particular about dining. Thanks to their love of food, there is an astounding variety of Chinese cuisine, coupled with unique anecdotes and etiquette. And thus, a great nation of gourmet has come into being. Delicacies are everywhere around us, not just in gourmet restaurants, but in our daily lives as well. Tofu, or bean curd, is a very common food. It has a soft and spongy texture. But there is a technique that allows you to cut the tofu into strips, almost as thin as a strand of hair. This dish is called Wensu Tofu. It's named after the monk who created it. He lived during the Qing dynasty. It's said that the preparation of this dish is used to test a chef's knife skills. Only the most experienced can do it. But it's actually quite easy to cook this dish. First, put all the shredded ingredients, such as winter bamboo shoots, long thread moss, green vegetables and ham into a pot of chicken soup. Then boil before adding the tofu. Wait until the tofu shreds rise to the surface. This dish is judged on how well the tofu's been cut. This is a professional chef's knife. Unlike in the West, Chinese chefs normally just use one knife. The way the knife is used can show its owner's cooking skills. In Chinese cooking, the way a knife's used can affect the taste and character of a dish. There are four main ways of cutting, namely vertical, horizontal, slanted and carving. Culinary knife skills are an essential part of Chinese cuisine. So what's the secret? Yanjiang is a coastal city in southwest Guangdong. It's home to the Yanjiang Shebazi Group, famous for their knives. General manager Li Zihui was born into a family of knife makers. He has high standards for his cooking knives. Every Tens of thousands of regular knives are manufactured here using modern technology. But cooking knives are made in a traditional way. The first step is to forge the knife blank. Blank. 
，那必须要人工来敲它，千锤百炼。A small billet is hammered repeatedly until it takes the shape of a normal kitchen knife. As it gets thinner from the spine to the edge, two lines gradually appear. Only the most skilled craftsmen can make these lines symmetrical and even. You need to build a structure, it can fit this exercise. You can cut, you can cut, and you can cut, and you can cut. This is the need. In the process, the knife metal must be frequently dipped into water to increase its strength. The heating process must be controlled manually. Too old, 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 too old. Good quality knives can only be forged when the heating process is carefully controlled. This is the traditional edging process. Only very experienced and skilled knife makers can do this properly. Next comes the polishing process, and then applying a handle. It's this detailed craftsmanship, reliant on a 1,000-year-old tradition, that enables Chinese master chefs to cook so wonderfully using just one knife. Yang Zhou, once called Huiyang in ancient times, is located south of the Yangtze and Hui rivers. Since the Sui and Tang dynasties, this place has been famous for its culture, especially during the Qing dynasty. The literati appreciate poetry and food. And they've influenced dishes with well-chosen ingredients and fine cooking. And this is one way cooks developed their knife skills. Seventy-one-year-old Zhu Cheng Long is a top Huayang cuisine chef. His dishes are as fine as antique porcelain. Today he will show us the two famous dishes, large meatballs of pork with crab meat and fish balls. Both demand the knife skills of a master chef. Meatballs are made with a ratio of three parts fatty pork to seven parts lean pork. The other ingredients are crab meat, eggs, green vegetables, ginger, shrimp, and Chinese scallion. Once prepared, the balls are called lion heads because that's what they look like. Many believe the meat is minced, but that's not the case. It's the product of great knife skills. Horizontal cutting means the blade is parallel to the chopping board. Vertical cutting is used while dicing what's already been shredded. The cook has to be very careful, cutting the tiny pieces into uniform cubes. Add some Shaoxing wine, shrimp and ginger to be mixed with the crab meat, then make them into balls. Stew the meatballs in a pot of water. The lean meat gradually shrinks and is moistened by the melting fat. The diced pieces 
Also prevent the balls from over shrinking, ensuring a dish that is tender, fresh and juicy. Two hours of skewing and it's ready to serve. It's the knife skills that make the dish both beautiful and tasty. The second dish might look similar, but fish balls cook differently. Three styles of cutting are needed. First, horizontally cut the fish in half. Then chop the fish using the spine of the knife. This is a kind of vertical cutting method. This method of chopping softens the fish, giving it a fluffy appearance. Then add some Chinese scallion, ginger and cooking wine with eggs. Stir before forming it into balls, then put them in a pot half filled with cold water. That's why this dish is also called floating fish balls. When the water boils, the balls are ready. They taste tender, soft and smooth. On August the 28th, 2011, an annual festival is held by Tai Lake to celebrate the start of a new fishing season. People have fished here since ancient times. Over time, Suzhou cuisine developed from Huiyang cuisine, characterized by gourmet lake cuisine. Bi Jiangming, a top Chinese chef, used to be the private chef for Lu Wenfu, the late gourmet chef and writer. Bi is a specialist in cooking squirrel-shaped mandarin fish, a traditional Suzhou food. This course alone allegedly makes over 2 million RMB in revenue for the Shijia restaurant annually. While many recognize this dish, how many really know how it's made? During Emperor Qianlong's reign, a salter of Yangzhou compiled the famous cookbook about Huiyang cuisine. Squirrel-shaped mandarin fish is included in it. The original recipe is simple. Over time, this dish has become renowned for its demanding knife skills. Forward slicing, combining with vertical cutting, can make a beautiful design out of the fish meat. Each cut must be exact to keep the fish meat connected with the skin and to allow it to cook evenly. Now that the fish has its shape, it's time to coat it with a starchy flour and to lightly fry it. 
，炸了以后啊，一定要圆，开出来呢像像那个圆一滑了。那么这就跟宋楚瑜生写是成一样的。It takes two steps to finish the frying process. First, a high temperature to shape the fish. Then take the pan off the heat to cool it down, with the fish still gently frying. When ready, take the fish out and put the pot back to reheat the oil. Then put the fish back in to bring to a crispy perfection. When the surface gets crispy, remove the fish and add some ready-made sweet and sour sauce. I'm going to use one garlic in the rojas and chicken wash. 滋滋香，滋滋香，就是的。Sizzling sounds like a squirrel squeaking, ending the cooking process. Then you are presented with a squirrel fish with a layered taste, made possible only through master knife skills. 朱邦太呢，最大的一个特点，做工呢比较细腻，注重的就是刀工精细。The beautiful dish blends well with the cultural surroundings of the area. In fact, knife skills in cooking are taken very seriously in China. All chefs believe they can be 70% successful if they have the right knife skills. Today, perhaps few are aware of how many exquisite dishes truly exist. More than 200 types of knife skills have been detailed and identified. It's a tough course. The seemingly simple action of cutting is actually quite difficult. It depends on the texture, size, and quality of the raw ingredients. Students have to use many knives before they can be equipped with their own. Even so, Chinese chefs spare no effort in practicing their knife skills, many for over a decade. In fact, some master chefs have been documented as early as 2,000 years ago. There is a classic Chinese story of a chef named Ding. After slaughtering 1,000 cattle over a period of 19 years, his knife still looked brand new. Whatever part of the animal he was working on, at his shoulder's height, under his feet, or parallel to his knees, his peeling of meat from the bones of the cattle was almost like classical music. Through a few select moves, the cattle were stripped to bare bone, with all the meat falling off. Ding was simply a magician with a knife. Nowadays, with modern technology, this ancient slaughtering technique is history. However, modern practitioners equipped with Ding skills still exist. Zhang Hao, the head chef of Lu's old mansion restaurant, demonstrates the famous dish, Three Nested Duck. A shell drake, a wild duck, and a pigeon are all that's needed. The goal is to stuff the pigeon into the wild duck and then into the shell drake, hence the name three-nested duck. Each one has to be boneless yet intact. The first step is to debone the duck. Lu 
This is a chance for a chef to show off his perfected knife skills. 刀工的要求非常高，也对这个厨师啊，临场的这种操作要求也非常高。如果说这个鸭子皮，你那个刀尖把它轻轻的一一碰的话，一不小心破了，这个菜就失败了。Deboning is a meticulous process, requiring a chef to be quick, methodical, and careful. 靠近那个胸骨的那块皮是非常薄的，还有那个尖那个后背上的那个刀尖稍微偏一下，它这个皮就破了。You need to use various techniques to complete the process, from cutting and picking to breaking. All parts of a knife are used, from the spine and point to the edge. It takes about an hour and a half to debone the three birds. Chef has to be focused throughout. After deboning. Turn the skins inside out and use boiled water to give them shape. Then stuff the pigeon in the wild duck, and then the wild duck into the shell drake, one wrapped in the other to complete the set. The 鸭子鸽子的骨骼组成部分要非常了解，你才好下刀。从什么地方下刀？呃，什么地方的骨头呃先剔出来？什么地方的骨头用刀背敲断 ？This is very similar to the concepts put forth by Ding, the ancient chef. It seems that the natural cutting skills emphasized in Chinese food are neither secret nor unattainable. What's important is a cook's dedication and practice. Only with a complete understanding of food and its corresponding cooking skills can exquisite Chinese delicacies be made.